Okay, so if you really understand decimals, well then this should be a pretty easy equation to solve. Let's take a look at the problem. So we have x to the 0.3 with the line over it. Now I'm not going to explain this right now because I want to give you a full opportunity to solve this all on your own. But to x to the 0.3 with this line over it is equal to negative 2. And we're trying to solve for the variable x. Okay, now feel free to use a calculator, but if you have an answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you're frustrated with math, or if you really want to understand the subject, then check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so here again is the problem. Feel free to use a calculator. So what is x equal to? Well, let's take a look at the right answer. x is equal to negative 8. Okay, now if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus. And if you're like, Amos, do you to math, man? I'm highly confused. Well, no problem. I'm going to explain this right now. Okay, so the first thing about this equation that I think uh, most people are going to find a little bit uh, different is this decimal right here. Now, I suspect most of you out there understand what this little line over the 3 is. So we have 0.3 with this bar over it. So this is a repeating decimal. So if we don't understand the equation, we're not going to be able to solve this. So let's go ahead and review what a repeating decimal is. And then, of course, we'll get into the steps on how to solve this equation. Okay, so here is 0.3 and here is 0.3 with this little line over it. So what's the difference between these two decimals? Well, let's talk about that right now because this is a big thing in math. Okay, so the first decimal, 0.3, we can actually say this as 3 tenths, right? So you got to understand place value. So I can write that as the fraction 3 over 10. But this uh, decimal here, this is not 0.3. It's 0.3 with this bar over it. This is what we call a repeating decimal. So this is 0.33333. This goes on into infinity. Now, the fraction equivalent of 0.3 with the bar over it, or 0.3 repeating, is not the same as 0.3. So the uh, fraction equivalent of 0.3 repeating is 1 third. Now, if you have your calculator out, go ahead and take 3 and divide it by 10, right? 3 tenths, you're going to see the decimal of 0.3 pop up on your calculator. You're not going to see any repeating 3s. Now, if you take 1 and divide it by 3, i.e. 1 third, you're going to see 0.3 repeating. So some of these repeating decimals, you need to understand or know their equivalent fraction. So 0.3 repeating is the fraction 1 third. Okay, so again, uh, you know, a real important uh, distinction between these two decimals. They look very similar, but there is a big difference. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it means that our problem, our equation, x is, uh, or x to the 0.3 repeating, uh, this equal to negative 2, is actually equivalent to this equation, x to the 1 third power is equal to negative 2. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take it from here. Now, if you understood this, well, that is fantastic. And if you're like, hey, Mr. You to Math Man, I didn't get this. Well, now that you know that x to the 0.3 repeating is equal to this, go ahead and see if you can solve this uh, equation for x. All right, so what do we need to do? Well, uh, first, we need to do this, and that is have you to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, you know, a lot of my videos, I kind of um, ab-lib. Uh, I don't really kind of script out my entire videos because I like to kind of teach from a natural state. But uh, I always love to kind of stop the video and ask for your support because that is the way for me to be able to reach as many people as possible on YouTube. That is my goal. You see, as a math teacher, you know, I'm happiest when I'm actually able to teach as many people as possible. But I can't do that unless I get your support. And uh, the best way you can support this channel is to literally hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well so you can get my latest videos. Now, if you like my teaching style and you really want to learn math from me, well, then check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this equation. So x to the one-third is equal to negative two. So we know that this one-third is the same thing as the decimal, 0.3 repeating. All right, so this equation, x uh, to the one-third is equal to negative two. Well, this happens to be equivalent to this right here, which is the cube root of x is equal to negative two. So uh, typically in algebra, when you study equations with roots, you're going to learn uh, or you're going to kind of see these type of equations first, like a cube root of x or the square root of x is equal to negative 2. Uh, typically, you're going to study these type of equations right there, and then you'll get into more interesting equations like this. But the main idea is to understand that here, this is what we call a radical equation, okay, because this symbol in algebra is called a radical. And these radical equations we can write using rational exponents, okay? So here, this is an exponent of this power, and it's a rational number, okay? So for those of you that may be taking algebra, and you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, where is this in my algebra course? We'll look under the chapter or unit called Radical Expressions, Radical Equations, and Rational Exponents. Okay, so we need to understand, again, that we can write a radical equation in terms of a rational exponent. So real quick, if I have the square root of x, this is equivalent to x to the 1 half power. If I have the cube root of x, that is equivalent to x to the 1 third power. All right, so that's basically all you need to know for the purposes of this equation. So instead of uh, solving this equation right here in terms of a radical uh, equation, typically you're going to want to work in rational exponents. Again, this is a rational number and it is an exponent. Okay, so x to the one-third power is equal to negative two. How do we solve this equation? Well, this is not that difficult. All right, so what are we trying to do here? Well, we're trying to solve for x, but we have x to the one-third. Well, what we want to do is uh, figure out some uh, sort of steps uh, that we need to take in order to go from x to the one-third to x to the first power, all right? So the solution to this equation is x, right? x is equal to some number, but that is the solution. But x is really x to the first power. So we need to kind of think to ourselves, all right, what can I do to this one-third exponent to get it to be one, all right? How can we turn a one-third into a one? And if you're like, hey, Mr. 2 Math Man, if you have one-third and you want to make it into one, maybe multiply it by three, right? Because one-third times three or three over one is indeed one. And that's exactly what we need to do. So we're going to raise both sides of the equation by three so we can get this exponent to become one. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at, how that, uh, take a look at that step, actually. So again, this is the basic step to solve um, a rational exponent type of equation, all right? So this is not that difficult. So x to the one-third, we're going to uh, cube both sides or take both sides to the power of three. Now again, why are we doing that? Because three times this one-third is going to be one or x to the first power. Of course, we're trying to solve for x, but whatever I do the, to the left-hand side, I gotta do the same thing to the right. So we need to take the third power of both sides of the equation. All right, so when we do that, we're going to have x to the one-third. There is a property, let me just kind of review this real quick, two squared to the third power. What you can do uh, when it comes to uh, powers and exponents, if you have an outside exponent, you can simply multiply it to the inside exponent. So two squared to the third power is equal to two to the sixth. Now, if you don't believe me, let's just go ahead and just think about this real quick. Two squared to the third power is what? Well, that's two squared times two squared times two squared. This is two twos. Here's another two twos. Here's two twos. All this is six twos or two to the sixth power. All right, so again, we're talking about basic algebra and properties of powers and exponents. So that's why we can take this outside three and multiply this by this uh, uh, exponent one third. All right, so three times one third, of course, is one. And now here, I have negative two to the third power. Okay, so that means we're gonna take negative two and multiply it by itself three times. All right, so we're almost there. So negative two times itself three times is what? Well, a negative times a negative is a positive, so this is a positive four. Positive four times negative two is going to be negative eight. 
All right, so that is the solution to this equation. And uh, hopefully the actual algebra part here wasn't too difficult to understand. But of course, I'm kind of you know quickly going over a lot of things that you really have to study in detail in algebra. Again, this is a radical equation, and this equation here is using rational exponents. So typically when you're solving radical equations, you, you want to write them in terms of a rational exponent, and then basically take the steps uh, that I uh, just showed you. Now, of course, this is a very easy problem, and if you really want to learn this stuff, well, you're going to do more complicated problems. But uh, the big takeaway here in terms of those of you that were confused about the decimals is to understand that there is a huge dis uh, distinction between 0.3 and 0.3 repeating, or a repeating decimal and a non-repeating decimal. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.